talk to you today about why I still am madly in love with IOG's new paint inlays, even though I messed up the first try. This is called Indigo Floral. It has a beautiful, almost French provincial kind of look. For my first project, I decided to go big. That's my first mistake. Whenever you're trying a new product or a new paint medium, it's always best to practice first on a smaller piece. That way, you'll know how all of your products react start to finish. I found that the paint inlays work best for me when I apply them to chalk paint. I gave my dresser two solid coats of Debbie's DIY chalk paint. Next step is to arrange your inlays. There are eight sheets in each package, so you'll need to arrange them according to the size and shape of the piece that you're working on. Like, kind of like a puzzle, right? The inlays must be applied into wet paint. So after you have arranged the inlays according to the position that they need to be, trim them to size, Keeping in mind that you'll also need to trim away that little white border that's around each of the inlay sheets. Apply a coat of your paint. And then apply the inlay sheet pigment side down into the wet paint. Gently press it in place. Follow this procedure for each piece of inlay. Whether you decide to paint the entire drawer in one step and then apply your inlays, or paint one section at a time, the most important thing to remember is that the paint must be wet when you apply the inlay. I like to use a brayer to press the inlay into place to assure that there is good adhesion. Then press with a damp cloth to start activating those pigments. Then move on to the next section. First, apply the wet paint. Position your inlay and press it into the wet paint. Line this up now. Little grid lines. I have that laid on there and I'm just gonna press with my hand. Now I'm gonna take a brayer. So I'm gonna brayer this so that we get a really good adhesion. This is a damp cloth, not super wet, just damp. I'm going to dampen this and that is also going to begin to activate that pigment. I've waited several hours until the chalk paint and the inlay were completely dry. Take a damp, damp cloth again, or you can use a fine mist sprayer, and I'm gonna wet this because I'm gonna start wanting to pull this away. Now it's time to gently pull back that inlay. Oh, here we go. Now, I have got some areas here that did not adhere completely. I'm okay with that. I applied my chalk paint rather thickly because I like a lot of texture. It's in these areas where I may not have the best transfer of pigments into the grooves and texture of the paint. I can always touch up any areas that didn't transfer with a matching paint color. These pigments can also be reactivated with water so you can take a small detail brush and move the pigment around to fill in any missing areas. I actually was a little bit embarrassed to even share a video on this. So I had my video all ready to go. I waxed this dresser to finish it over a month ago. I had applied a quick and generous coat of wax. 
And I noticed that even with this first coat of wax, it was lifting some pigment. And of course, I simply forged ahead and continued waxing and buffing out any areas where the pigment had moved. Fast forward one month. I took one of the drawers out to wipe it down to see how well that wax held up. And here's what happened. I was pretty shocked to find that I could remove the pigment with a damp cloth. So I applied a second coat of wax. Two days later, I was still able to pull up pigment when I applied additional layers of wax. I applied a third coat of wax. I was still seeing some pigment residue, so I took one of the drawers and sanded it down completely and started from step one. As it was pretty obvious to me that I needed to explore a new way to apply a finish to the inlays. This is a fine mist sprayer. In order to seal the pigments into place, what you'll need to do, mix one part water and one part of your favorite clear polycrylic sealer. What this is going to do is it's going to be just enough of the polycrylic to seal those pigments into place. You'll wanna be sure to label your mister also. I keep this handy so that whenever I have an inlay project, I will use this little polycrylic and water mixture to seal my pigments into place. I spray my project two times with this light mixture, letting it dry between coats. Once this initial layer of polycrylic is applied, then you can go ahead and use a wax or a more permanent setting polycrylic sealer to your piece. You know, we live in a world today where everything is quick and fast. We have a drive through restaurant. We have microwaves and instant coffee. Your class is made while you wait. It's quick, fast, easy. We're looking for the easiest way to get something done. As a creative, I had to step back and remember that part of the process of creativity is immersing yourself into the process taking your time and enjoying every step of the way. That's what I love about the inlays. While I was quick on the gun to get this dresser finished so I could hurry up and get a video done, I skipped an important step. I didn't do a practice board to test my products start to finish. It looks like I will be sanding this back repainting it and doing it again the right way. You can find all the products that I used at our brick and mortar shop in Medina, New York or at lnjgoods.com. For more inlay projects, go ahead and watch this playlist. And don't forget to subscribe for more projects from L&J Goods.